Welcome back for another Possum Stamps YouTube tutorial. Today we're creating a six by six shaker spinner card. This is my first attempt at creating one of these shaker spinner cards. So we're gonna get through this together. Here I have some circle dies that will help me create the shaker and the spinner. I also have from the new Possum Stamps release, the Gingerbread Lane six by six stamp set. There are several sentiments in here as well as three gingerbread men, one girl, one boy, one that has a little bite taken out of it. There's a gingerbread house with tons of decorations, some snowflakes, and lots of candy. We also have a tree. I have sentiments that say you make the holidays sweet from our home to yours. Merry Christmas, oh snap, goody gumdrops, holiday treats just for you. And all I want for Christmas is cookies and you, basically everything sweet. I have a piece of Copic friendly paper Actually, I have Copic Express It paper in my Misty. I use some Copic Friendly ink to stamp out my images. As you can see, I stamped out a ton of images. We're not going to use all of these today, but I do like to stamp as many as I can onto my Copic Express It paper. That way, when I need a few little pieces or elements here or there, I already have them cut out and ready to go. I started off by coloring my tree with some G markers. My darkest color was a G9. I blended that out with a G7, and finally, I filled in the white space with a G5. I do go over my images a couple of times. For the heart, I used a an R29 and an R24. For the little bulbs on my tree. I had an R29, a Y18, and I believe I used a BG5. I'm going to color up the container using some E30 markers. My darkest is an E35. I thought I could get away with two colors, so I blend it with an E31. I didn't like that, so I go over it again using the E35 for my shadows, blending it out with a mid-tone, which is going to be an E33, and finally I'll finish that off with the E31. I do color my candy canes off camera, so I color the red portion with an R29, R27, and an R24. I'm going to make you a little bit dizzy here. My apologies because I do spin my paper around. I have a BG combination, BG7, 5, and 3. I also color two more lollipops, one with a minty green combination. That is going to be a G000, a G00, and a G02, and then a pink combination, which is going to be an R22, 21, and 20. On to my gingerbread girl. Isn't she just the cutest? I'm going to color both the boy and the girl with the exact same color combination in the exact same way. So I start with an E27 on the left and the right side. I blend it out with an E25. I add an E23 and finally an E21. The E21 is pretty light, so I am going to saturate this paper with a little more ink. I actually go over the girl and the boy three times in total to get the blend that I like. I'm going to add some pleats to the skirt of the girl. Now, when you're adding um, shadowing and you want to add like pleats, I try to do it with a lighter marker first because it's easier to wash it out if you don't like it with a darker color. So I'm going to start my pleats, which are going to be just like little tiny triangles. I'm going to start that with an R21. But first, I'll color in her little cheeks with that R21. I realize that I think Think it's a little bit too light so I am going to come in later with an R22. So there's the mapping with the R21. Here's where I'm deepening that color and then I'll blend it out with an R21 and finish it off with an R20. I do the same thing for the bow and the girl's hair. For the trunk of the tree I used a single marker. I just used an R47 to color in that trunk. There I'm adding that little bit of rosiness with that darker pink. 
For the boys' jumper, I'm using a Y combination, so a Y19, 17, and 15, and then I used the E21 and colored the hair. I did off camera use my black gel pen on the eyes of the gingerbread men and then I'm going to come in with my white gel pen and add highlights to the trees as well as the lollipops and also to my gingerbread boy and girl. I started with just a few and then I decided that I wanted to go all the way around the image like I am right here. And so I'll go back on those other two images and finish that off with the extra dots. Moving along to our spinner shaker element, I'm gonna to try to walk you through this as best I can. This is one of the circles that came out of the rings that I created using my circle dies. I added some worn lipstick distress oxide. I have some Versamark black onyx ink and I'm going to stamp the sentiment on to this circle that says Merry Christmas. I'll set that aside to dry and here I have my circle that is going to be my spinning element. I placed it in the middle so I know where to add this stabilizer ring. So this ring is going to kind of hold that spinning mechanism in place. I doubled it up so I cut it out twice. I had the measurements on the screen and I will also link them. For that ring it's three by two and a half inches and then for the outer ring right here. This is where the window is going to be. It's three and a half by three inch circles. And I'm using the what's left on my brush of that worn lipstick. So that is what's going to hold my shaker pieces in place. I'm going to add a piece of acetate. I did cut the circle a little bit larger than the opening. Here's where I didn't think things through quite as well as I could have. I have an eighth inch piece of foam tape and I've removed the backing to move it or maneuver it around this circle. Now it's sticking to my fingers so that's what I'm fighting with as it keeps coming up. I'm going to add three layers of this foam tape and that's what's going to hold my shaker pieces in place. I'm going to use some possum stamps shaker pieces and then some little uh, seed beads from my stash for my shaker bits, but I am going to stack this three high so I get a nice shake. I'm going to use my anti-static tool, and then I did cut out this snowflake paper. I wanted two tones on my shaker portion, but I didn't think about the window that needs to go on top that's larger. So the, the outer ring is going to be much bigger than this one right there. And I'm like, oh darn. So I have to add some more foam tape to the outside to hold that in place. Now it's very important for you to remember to put in your spinning element before you enclose your shaker card because that is going to, the top piece is what's going to make sure that your spinning element doesn't just fall off your card. So I'm laying down that spinning element. I'm putting my window over the top and I'm going to add some liquid glue just to make sure that I get a good adhesion between the foam tape and my window. And then we can start adding our little elements. I did cut them out using my brother's scan and cut. There are coordinating dies that go with this. I don't happen to have them, so um, they are available in the Possum Stamp Store. I will have the items that I use, the Shaker Bits and this Gingerbread Lane stamp set linked in the description box below so that you can head over and take a look at this if you're interested in this adorable stamp set. I'm going to start putting my spinner together. I have I'm putting each of the same elements, matching elements on opposite ends. So you see the boy and girl are, die, are straight up and down on opposite sides of the ring. I did the same thing with the boy, with the girls, and then I'm going to add the trees to the left side of each of the images. One thing that I'm very careful 
I'm using liquid glue. You could certainly use double-sided tape. I'm moving my ring. You'll notice I move my ring frequently. That's to make sure that I'm not getting any glue anywhere else under the ring, on the edge of the ring, on the edge of my, or on the back side, peeking out of my little elements like the lollipop. I want to make sure that this is spinning freely so I check it quite frequently. Once I get all of my little elements on there, I spin it around and make sure that everything is moving perfectly. If by chance you get some glue in a spot that you didn't want it, just use some cornstarch baby powder or your anti-static tool tool to just kind of sop that up. I have a six by six card base, but I wanted to add some reinforcement because it's very inexpensive paper. So I did add a piece of white cardstock to the back of my spinner panel. I'm going to glue that to the six by six top folding card, and that's going to be my card for today. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, this was my first try at this. I hope I explained it well enough. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment box below. Until next time, have a fabulous day. Thanks so much for watching.